All right, guys, I know we just finished up a roof job over here at Cason's RV in Mesa, Arizona, but I got another one to do. What we have here is a 1998 Winnebago Chieftain, but this is a diesel pusher. It's a turbo diesel. It's one of the uh, first times they started putting diesel engines in the back of these. And the owner of this actually is from North Carolina. He got it at such a good price, I guess, because the roof was not in great condition. And he dragged it over to me to see if we can't fix it. But there's an awful lot wrong with this one. You can kind of see the tape right up there. And it's definitely hard to see. There's an extra set of molding right above the gutter right there that got screwed down. Now from what I gather, the uh, people that sold it to them just tried to stabilize the roof so that they could sell it and hope that nobody noticed. There's that tape we're talking about. It looks all muddled right here. That's because they coated it with a roll-on coating. You can see how loose this roof is everywhere. They went ahead and put some screws down through the roof too. Why not? And uh, yeah, this is not a very clean roof whatsoever. I kind of feel like I'm going to fall through it. And uh, I got Scott over there doing another Winnebago adventure. So we have all this issue going on right there. Those vent covers were installed incorrectly, screwed down into the roof. We got a broken skylight over here. And uh, the whole thing's delaminated. It's very bad. It's a lot of extra work we're gonna be doing on this one. Now, what concerns me is that when we go down inside, we're gonna see um, the owner already built the wall to support this roof because the whole thing had collapsed down around the roof AC. And I think that'll tie into why they put screws right here into the roof when we go down below. And yeah, it is already popped out here too. You think Eternabon roof repair tape would have held forever. All right, so we go in right here. Like I said, the owner built this uh, wall right here to drive it to me. Now Winnebago would never installed this trim right there. So what I'm suspecting is that somebody added trim in order to screw down from above and into it, but also this roof is collapsed. And so they added the trim right there to kind of hide everything because this piece of paneling is kind of rotten. You can see this yellow mess right there that's glue that they sprayed to kind of glue the panel back up. And they used the wrong glue because it melted the, the foam. This panel's pretty bad. Let me run the slide out room out so you guys can see. So there's a lot of uh, staining and damage right here. Like this entire ceiling panel is rotten. Now the thing with Winnebago roofs is that there is no structure within them. So having a damaged ceiling panel is not ideal for the lamination that because the lamination what gives it the strength. So yeah, I can replace the roof and the roof decking, but that's where they but this right here is a roof AC and that's the weight. And that's what wants this roof to collapse. So I think I'm gonna have to add supports to this one, unfortunately, because that's a really bad looking ceiling. So what I'm gonna do is just start taking this roof apart just like uh, we normally do. But I do wanna remind you guys, that's why it's very important before you buy an RV, take a look at the roof. Because uh, the roof's a vital part of an RV. And driving it all the way from North Carolina to Arizona is a fairly expensive venture on top of replacing a roof. Okay, roof day. So we've torn these things apart enough that you guys should be able to see. So I'm more concerned about what the decking is gonna look like once we get to that point. So let me get to that point and uh, then we'll catch up. But I will leave you with one final thought. Adding tape and the coating and extra molding right there has caused a lot more work for me because somebody tried to do it the wrong way as a Band-Aid rather than just doing it right to begin with. 
That's why I don't really like the band-aids as far as roof coatings and roof repair tape because they're just band-aids and they just cause problems for the repair person to do the job right the next time. I know I said we check in once it's all torn apart, but it's not going well. It did rain the other day, or actually yesterday, and so there's water on the dash. I took the AC apart. And sure enough, somebody's been up here doing some work rebuilding the ceiling. All of this is rotten. I knew the skylight was broken, but all that was rotten too. Naturally, all of this wood is rotten. Somebody has replaced the ceiling panel too, it looks like. Yeah, somebody replaced it. And they used chipboard, it looks like. It's not even like Luon paneling. So there's no real strength to any of this. So I don't know, this is gonna be something I mostly am documenting for the owner to be aware of because replacing ceiling panels is not in the cards on this job. Uh, that's a big job to replace a ceiling panel correctly. All right, so there's definitely a lot of issues with this. There's that molding that was added to the gutter. This entire sidewall is kind of rotten, starting from here all the way down. The other side is even worse because that's where it had a little bit of damage on the rear cap where they hit something and pinned it back together. So all these holes were all stripped out and rusted out. You should be able to see that crack in the rear cap right there. And all the rust that's coming out of those holes. Of course. There's a big chunk of delamination right here, too. You can see that. Uh, so basically all the way up to the top there. I was not expecting to find this coach to be quite so rough if we're going to be putting a new roof on it. And yes, they did have to postpone work on this one in order to get this sightseer roof done. Because they're doing a brand new roof on that one because it got storm damage on the front got all completely ripped off and uh we're scheduled for rain in a couple days so i don't know if you guys understand this piece of molding right here is standard rv molding and not what should be on a winnebago roof somebody put this on here because the roof likely pulled out See, it had that belt line or that uh, push in molding cover or screw cover. That's not Winnebago molding, that's just a band aid repair that secured the roof to the radius there. I mean, obviously, it worked. If you guys need to do that, if you want to do a cheap Winnebago roof repair with a loose radius, you can do that, I guess. It's a lot of extra holes, and that molding is actually pretty expensive. So, basically, this right here shouldn't have any molding on it. It's supposed to just be tucked into the gutter that's below right here. And you can actually see it's too short. That's why they did it. All right, well, and then they use some turnabon tape here, which surprise, surprise, didn't work down there either. And then this is a roof coating. It doesn't feel like a silicone one, it feels more like an acrylic one. And of course we know that acrylic won't stick to the uh, silicone sealant that Winnebago used, but they did this after the fact, or somebody did, because for whatever reason, people always assume that a roof coating is gonna solve all their water problems. It's gonna make a one continuous monolith uh, membrane, but it doesn't. When we take the ACs off, we'll see that they did uh, the hack repair too, where they didn't even coat around the AC, they just, uh, they didn't uh, take the ACs off to do it. They just kind of like did a coating around it. So again, it's not even a monolith uh, coating. Not that it was going to do anything. But I will say it did it here pretty well. But I don't know. Don't, do not screw these things down in the roof ever. Use the bracket that it come with. 
because this is everything about that is wrong. Everything about that is wrong. All you've done is trap water inside there, and this is not watertight. Air or water can get into here very easily, get down into there, and it just sits because it can't get out. All right, enough of my ranting about this. I have a lot more to tear apart. All right, so now you can maybe see how much waviness is in this. You walk on this thing, and it feels like it's falling apart. But I was going to try to pull this off because I got all the eternal bond tape cut, but they went ahead and screwed the uh, radius down below there too. So now I'm going to have to rip that off and find those screws. So this is a lot of extra work that I did not quote for. None of this is a normal Winnebago roof repair labor quote. And I always touch on this on every Winnebago roof, it feels like. Unsurprisingly, that roof's uh, coating that they put on that's acrylic based didn't stick to the silicone self-leveling lap sealant that Winnebago uses. Only silicone's gonna stick to silicone. And you'd say, well, what's the big deal? But it is dirty under there, so that coating wasn't doing anything. So it's kind of just a making money off of somebody, I think. All right, well, I got this cover pulled off. You can see all the dirt that got stuck underneath there. And then all the screws, let's see. Here's one of the screws rusted through. Nice hole into the roof causing water leaks. So that's why you install it with the brackets that mount onto the flange. That way the water can run out from underneath and you haven't put more holes into the, uh, the roof either. These holes that are on the base of this vent are just for the through bolt and not to actually screw down into the roof. Don't do that that but uh chad and his crew are almost done ripping everything off of that one they have so much further ahead than me maybe i need to stop making videos about it right here you can see the common winnebago skylight is cracked it's cracked there it's cracked there it's definitely been cracked there a few times it's cracked there even cracked there and this whole roof is collapsing oh mama so I'm going to have to take the awning off on this one because it, at least the feet of it, the upper mounts are over the top of that rail right there instead of underneath it like they normally are. That, that's what happened in 98, I guess. And I guess I forgot to tell you, this uh, solar panel will not be going back on. at all <laughs> it might be broken <laughs> oh look they didn't coat underneath it either cool all right i'm never gonna get to the screws on this or that because the wood's all rotten it's never gonna pull up so i'm just gonna rip it off because it needs so rotten underneath it and you can see how rotten that was and how it wasn't doing anything anyways. Looks like they went ahead and got glue all over the vent too when they repaired the ceiling. Huh. Maybe my standards are too high. Uh. And sure enough, there were a lot of extra screws holding down this radius here. These 5 sixteenths. But just not the right screw head either because it's gonna just punch a hole through the stuff too and tear pretty easily. It's definitely a shame. Somebody put a lot of money into uh, doing a bad repair and they could have just done it right the first time. Surprisingly, uh, I guess I didn't point out that the, the wall's pretty well delaminated there too. And of course at the top there. Well, I guess it wasn't enough to use a roof coating. They decided to use a Billy Mays, is that flex seal in a bottle or a spray can. Surprisingly, that didn't hold up. I just have to break it. That urethane sealant off right there. We'll get the front cap taken off and start taking this roof apart. Oh, looks pretty bad already. The good news is all the screws right here seem to be in really good shape. Been able to use this windshield uh, gasket breaker putty knife for the last few jobs. And this worked out really well to break the front caps loose rather than just using putty knife.
you know, the front cap. Or the rear cap. All right, well, we got the front cap off right there. And it's not a big surprise, it was leaking yeah. over there. Uh, and was leaking the entire length of everything. Your brackets are on there. I know! The, this is when 98, when Minnebago uh, did a really good job gluing everything down, remember? Even that uh, front cap seal right there was done well. They got they got lazy towards uh, 2014. I got nothing respect for the, the for the workers. It's always management. I'm always gonna blame management. I mean, would you say there's a little bit of a water leak right about no, there? It's not a water leak. This Come on, you could have saved this roof. It doesn't take much effort. Of course, this is gonna be the uh, nice glue fixed to the foam, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start ripping the roof off at this point. Everything else is pretty much disconnected. Uh, the sewer vents, that vent, the skylight, and the refrigerator vent, they'll just rip off with the roof because all the screws holding them down are just rusted in place and they won't do anything. So I'm just gonna start ripping this thing off. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I shouldn't be able to do this. So it won't roll up any further than that because that's where those uh, screws are screwed down. So I'll just go ahead and rip this thing off. What are the chances to be able to roll that up? Oh, pretty good when the whole roof is uh, rotten. The roof's off already. <laughs> Let's get the rest of it off. So yeah, it's still wet right here. It's very wet. You can see the vent just came up with it. Skylight just came up with that because a little bit of water damage there too. already all right well we'll say this much it came up pretty easily it's kind of weird stuff going on over here I don't know if when they redid the ceiling they melted the foam a little bit or something else is living in this and eating some wood but I don't think they would eat styrofoam but it's polystyrene so I don't know maybe it munched on it a little bit so it kind of looks like it's uh, been eaten and then over here those are those screws we were talking about they did use some flat washers to hold it down and I thought they would rip out but I was afraid that they screwed into the uh, trim that they put across and that's what they did. So those are going all the way down into the ceiling. So I'll have to take those out next. But yeah, this roof is in very, very bad repair. Might be the worst one I've seen yet. Anyway, we have it right here. This is where I like to try to explain why we couldn't just relaminate and always have to uh, replace the deck. So this is made out of a, a luon, which is just three layers of material. The first layer is still glued on the underside of that on that I ripped off. This is the second layer, 90 degrees, and this is the third layer, 90 degrees to that. Uh, so you'd have to relaminate, what's that, six sides of paneling that's all been warped to try to make this work, but uh, that's not going to work either. And now remember there's no framing in the roof itself, it's just styrofoam. Uh, 
Luan down below, Luan up on top, and Phylon on top. So this is the entire structure is the lamination. I think I'm going to probably have to add some bracing right at the AC because once we pull that 2x4 wall out, I think we're going to regret not having support there because the whole thing did sag and they've replaced this panel and that panel and the ceiling down below. And uh, I really was not expecting to have to do any of this. I was told that it was just uh, a simple roof job. Well, the good news is Winnebago did put metal right there. It's a little rusty, but the bad news is I think I found that we did have some vermin here and they were made a nest right about here. I don't know. That's kind of scares me if I'm gonna find the entire length of this thing. But a nice moist place like this would attract a lot of vermin. And naturally, this layer stuck down very well, which is what I was afraid of. Normally, this would all come off in one big chunk because all three layers of the loo ones are stuck together, but because they've all delaminated to itself, the only thing that remains is giving this roof any strength whatsoever. It's this little 30 second piece of uh, loo on wood ply but the good news too is Winnebago did put metal right there for the uh, ladder somewhere along the line they decided they didn't need to do that anymore and I've been having to put them back in so very happy that Winnebago was doing good I guess in 1998 I think I can even here use these So I couldn't figure out how they uh, secured this uh, ceiling to the roof. So I had a hard time seeing the screws on the uh, roof. That's because these are through bolted into like nut certs or nut rivets on the roof itself. So naturally they're all rusted. That one's stripped out. And I'm sure there's going to be at least one I can't get to. So again, just a lot more extra work than I was planning on doing. I don't know, somebody put a lot of effort into this to do it the wrong way. Hopefully you can see that threaded nut that they're keeping captured on the top. And some of these are spinning. That one's spinning. Mike is going to try to help me out from underneath. Thank you, Micah. Uh, yeah. Keep going. All right, well, that one's done. It's about two more to go. Unfortunately, the last two are uh, stuck underneath the beam inside, and I can't take that down because the 2x4 wall is underneath it. So I just cut off one of them right there. It's still stuck in the ceiling there. But I just cut off the last one, and then I'll be able to continue on. Now, normally I wouldn't take all the Luan off at the same time, but I'm going to have to fix all this foam and reinforce all these long channels because it's broken in so many places that I need to give it a little bit more strength than just a, a cross member right here, right, right here. All right, well, there we go. The last one's out of the way. All the Luan's pulled off of it. It is pretty well supported here and pretty well supported in the back. I will just have to um, get some foam and start laying some foam down and start repairing the roof here or the foam in there. And then most of the cross supports 
right there are going to be proud and they're also rusted through and not doing anything so I'll probably have to rip those out too. But yeah, that's a lot of water that's been getting in this coach and the craziest repair I've ever seen in my life as an RV tech. But I got a big mess to clean up. The guys are getting grumpy when I leave a mess on the ground. And the sun's getting low there. So yeah, normally it comes up in sheets. I don't have to do it in splinters like this. This is a lot more work all the way around. 